Hello everyone and welcome to EasyA.ae. Today we're going to explain experiment number eight of electromechanical lab, which talks about four different types of DC motors. In this experiment, we're going to talk about the shunt motor, the separately excited motor, the series motor, and the compound motor. Generally, we're going to talk about the speed versus torque, versus torque characteristics for every motor. I'm going to talk about other characteristics as well. We'll talk first about the separately excited motor. As you can see here, the speed versus torque characteristics, we have almost a, a constant speed for all torques. The relationship is linear and the curve is not very, you know, it doesn't decrease so much. It's almost a constant speed. It's compared to the other types of DC motors, second only to the shunt motor. The shunt motor is the most stable one. So let's start with the separately excited. Let's see why uh, the characteristics look this way. Uh, as you can see in the separately excited DC motor circuit here, uh, the field circuit, which is in blue, and the armature circuit are electrically um, apart. They're not connected. There is no current connection between the field circuit and the armature circuit. So um, when you change the, the torque, which is the load is connected to the shaft. So when you can change the torque of the, uh, at, at the shaft, what changes here is IA. This is IA of the armature circuit. When IA changes, um, the uh, field circuit doesn't, if, is not affected by that because it's electrically connected disconnected so speed as you can see is equal to vt which is which is constant which is constant times ra minus ra ia divided by the flux multiplied by a constant kg so the only variable here in this equation is ia so the speed doesn't change much as the torque changes the torque of course has a linear relationship uh, with the current IA. So you can say that N is, is, is uh, related directly to the torque because the torque is directly related to IA. But you know, the only thing that affects the speed is, that, is the relationship of the torque with the current. The voltage curve has, has a slope K1, which is delta N over delta EA. Choose any two points from the curve N2 and uh, N2 E2 and N1 E1. So the curve is going to be N2 minus N1 over E2 minus E1. You'll get uh, your curve K1. And since N actually equals EA, which is VT minus RA IA over 5P KG, then N over EA is equal to 1 over 5P KG. So this is similar to this equation here because here it's delta N over delta EA. Here, N over EA. So, K1 is actually related to this constant. So, if we assume that this is a constant, of course, because if we change the... Kg is always constant, but if you change the flux, how do you change the flux? You change it with the field, with the field uh, current, the field in the, in the, in the, in this, in the uh, field circuit, the, the current in the field circuit. So, you change it through IF. So as IF increases, IF increases, K1, the flux increases, so K1 decreases. So IF, when IF increases, K1 decreases. And when IF decreases, K1 increases. So you see we have uh, an inversely proportional relationship between IF and K1. Now we're going to talk about the torque versus current, armature current characteristics in the, uh, in the separately excited DC motor. Now, as you can see here, the torque has a linear relationship with IA, the armature current, as we said before. So this, this curve has a, has a slope K2, and K2 by nature is equal to delta T over delta IA. So choose any two points, T2 minus T1 over TIA2 minus IA1. And we know that T is equal to uh, phi t times IA multiplied by 
any constant, let's call it Km. Okay, so phi depends on if. So as you see, uh, we can get a relationship between this equation and the equation of K2. We can say that since here it's delta T over delta IA, let's see what's T over IA here. T over IA, as you can see, is Km phi. And phi, again, depends on IF. So if we, we can only change K2, which is delta T over delta IA, which is, has a relationship with Km phi, which is T over IA, we can only change it by changing IF, because Km is a constant. And if you increase IF, naturally, K2 is going to increase. So we have a direct relationship between IF and K2. So when you increase IF, it's not going to be linearly, of course, because Km is not constant for different, uh, for different phi. But uh, we're going to have a relationship somewhat to, uh, with, with K2 and IF. So when you increase IF, you're going to increase K2. Um, now we're going to move on to the shunt motor. The shunt motor, as you can see here in the speed versus torque characteristics, has the most stable speed. So if you can see here, um, the speed doesn't change much in the shunt motor with the torque compared to the other uh, type of DC motors. So let's see the circuit of the, of the, of the shunt mo DC motor here. Um, shunt in general means parallel. So the shunt, the winding of the armature is parallel with the winding of the field. It's connected in parallel. So the total current is going to be split between the field circuit and the armature circuit. The field in blue, armature in black, and the source in red. So IT it's going to be IA plus IF. You can only change IF through changing VT because IF is VT over RF, as you can hear. See here, this is RF. So it's, it's almost constant. So when you change the speed, when you, when you change the torque of the load here connected at the shaft, IA changes, but IF doesn't change. So the, so the field remains constant. So again, we have the same, almost the same characteristics of the, uh, of the separately excited, except that it's more stable. Um, the voltage versus speed characteristics uh, we have a linear relationship between voltage and speed as with most DC motors and we have also a linear relationship between torque and current IA. Let's move on now to the serious uh, DC motor. <laughs> now we're going to go to the serious motor and again we're going to go straight away to the compound motor. For the serious motor uh, the relationship between the torque and speed is nonlinear. So you see we have such a nonlinear curve here. The speed is, uh, unlike the previous two, the shunt and separately excited, the speed is not stable as the torque increases. Um, let's see why we have such characteristics. If you look at the circuit here, we have only one current, IT, which flows into the armature circuit and the, and the, and the field circuit, uh, which are in series with each other. So T, as we know, is equal to a constant Km multiplied by the flux phi P multiplied by I A, which is armature current. And the flux phi P depends on the current IF. So, and IF is the same as IA, is the same as IT. So, if we assume, you know, that, the, that Km is nearly constant, we're going to have T proportional to I T squared because it, I F depends on I T and I A is the same as I T so it's going to be K M I T squared so we're not going to have a linear relationship as you're going to see in the function here it's totally nonlinear now we're going to move to the uh, to the compound motor as you can see here in the black curve the compound motor is not very nonlinear like the serious motor it's like uh, an intermediate 
uh, curve between the serious motor and the and the shunt motor. We're going to see why in the in this in the arm in the circuit of the compound motor here. Here we have compound. So the compound motor is actually a motor that has both serious winding and the, f and the shunt winding. So this is going to be RF of shunt. So we're going to have two fields. We're going to have a field from the shunt and a field from, it's called this shunt, and the field from the serious winding. If you add them together, we get the total field. So as we said, T is equal to phi P total, which is this here, multiplied by I T, sorry, multiplied by I A, multiplied by a constant K M. So when I when T changes and I A changes, phi P changes, but it doesn't change as the same as in the series motor, because here it con it con it's two parts. It's the part from the sh from the shunt plus the part from the series, and the part from the shunt it's totally independent of torque, so it's gonna not gonna be affected. This is going to remain constant, but the part from the series is affected by the torque because it's affected by I A, so it's going to change. So we're gonna have like K M phi p multiplied by, you know, phi p from the shunt plus phi p from series uh, multiplied by i a and this one is constant while this one depends again on i a so it's gonna be like proportional to k m phi shunt which is constant plus I A squared multiplied by K M. So you see, it also depends on I A squared, but there's a there's a constant component added to it. So the field is not going to be like the series. It's going to be a little bit more like a like a like a linear curve, but not so much a linear curve as you see here. Um, let's move on now to the practical part and see how all this works. Hello everyone again. Uh, we're going to start now with the practical part of experiment number eight for Electromechanical Lab. We're going to start first with the separately excited DC motor. The separately excited DC motor, as we explained and as the name indicates, has two separate circles, one for the field and for, one for the armature. So we're going to start by connecting a constant DC source to the armature, to the uh, field circuit. So we're going to go through current meter to monitor IF. Going to connect a voltage meter in parallel with the armature, just to measure the the ar uh, sorry in parallel with the with the sh with the uh, with the winding, with the field winding, just to measure the voltage at the field winding. It's good to have all the measurements clear. Now we're going to do the same thing, but with variable DC source with the armature. Remember, all DC motors, of course, as the name indicates, are connected to DC sources. So we're going to go again through I2. From I2, we're going to connect E1. parallel with the with the armature see here is one there's the other because it's parallel yeah. not to forget to connect the uh, the neutral at the negative the first neutral we connected the variable at the second one because you connect it to the armature and the constant to the field circuit. Okay. And now we're going to have to connect 
the, we're going to have to, to start our measurements to see how the, the circuit reacts. One, one more thing on the, on, the, on the connections. Don't forget to connect the torque from the prime mover, the output torque, to the, to the uh, input labeled 7 slash T on the analog inputs of the data acquisition control interface and connect the speed output to the 8 slash N and connect the grounds here, the green ground. And also, because we want to, we want to control IF here, you should connect the rheostat resistor in series. Of course, don't forget to turn off the power. Connect the rheostat resistor in series with the field winding, so we can change the value of the current rheostat. Um, sometimes that the value of the resistor is not enough, so just in case, we're going to connect a resistance from here also to connect the value of the of the of, uh, to to increase the value of the rheostat. You see, connecting something is in series is, is really simple. Just disconnect something from here, so the current flows like this from here to the resistance we added back to the rheostat. So it's in series. Now. Let's move on to the uh, computer part. Hello everyone, welcome again to the computer part of, of uh, the separately excited DC motor of experiment number 8. Um, we are required here to get the voltage versus speed characteristics and the torque versus armature current characteristics. Um, first we're going to start with the voltage versus speed. Uh, we're going to keep increasing the voltage and see what happens to the speed and plot it as a graph. Um, we require to set IF, which is here, as I told you in the in the practical part. I connected IF to I1. In the report, I1 is connected to IA and IF is connected to I2. Sorry about that. I switched them, um, but you can follow up. Uh, I1 is now is IF, I2 is IA, and E2 is EA, and E1 is the voltage on the uh, field on the on the field uh, winding. Now. So we're going to change the value of the uh, field rheostat in order to make it uh, 0.14 because we're using the 220 volt module. Um, we, we got that from the report. You can see it if you open the report at experiment number eight. Now we're going to we want to increase the current, so we so we decrease the field rheostat. This is how we change the rheostat from here. It's written field rheostat on the DC motor. Now, as you see, as I'm increasing it, it's approaching the, the required value. Point 0.2. Almost there. Oh, it's a little bit. As I told you in the practical part, I connected it to the uh, to the the resistive loads given in the in the device and I'm trying to switch in order to get the correct value of the current I'm gonna make put two resistors in parallel I'm gonna continue moving the rheostat no still far away use another set resistors Turning all the resistors on, see what happens. Um, so now I have to decrease the current. So I'm going to increase the rise stat 0.14. Yeah, now we have it. Now we're going to see, we're going to monitor the how the 
how th how the uh, speed increases as we change the voltage uh, through the table. We get the table from here. Now we are going to take a measurement at zero. Now the voltage AA is zero, so we already chose the voltages that we wanted, but we don't want E3, we don't want E4. Uh, we want I1, I2, we don't want I3, we want the torque and we want the speed, so we're fine here. Okay, as you can see here, E1, E2, torque, I1, I2, we got I4. So, you can fix that, just close the table, you can fix that by closing the meters, which you don't need, and start the table. We got it right away. Take a measurement. We don't have to switch anything off. We got it. E1, E2, I1, I2, and the torque and the speed. So that's the first value, E2, which is EA, is zero. So let's make the voltage 10%. Now it's 10%. Wait a little bit till the speed stabilizes. We're gonna take 10 measurements. Increase the voltage by 10% each time. As you can see here. Wait a little bit. Take a measurement, 40%, wait a little bit, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. Now, we're gonna switch it off. You can plot a graph through this function here. Choose the axis. You can see the y axis. Choose the speed. And in the x axis, choose it to be E2, which is EA. As you can see, we got a perfectly linear relationship. Now that we're done with that, um, we're asked to uh, to make the speed, to fix the speed, fix the armature voltage, and change the load torque. We change the load torque as we did in the in the dynamometer experiment by increasing the manual load given in the in the dynamometer here. We're gonna keep increasing it. So that's how we fin we increase the torque. Um, now we're required to fix the speed at 1500. So, gonna switch everything on again. So, e EF and EF, IF and EF are the same, didn't change anything. Uh, so, we're gonna keep monitoring the speed here until it, we're gonna increase the voltage until it reaches 1500. Not yet. Still not there. Now the speed is 1500. Be a little bit accurate. In that. All right. Now we got 1500. So we're gonna keep increasing the torque. You can watch the torque here. You can get the corrected torque or the non-corrected torque. Um, can just ignore this. Now this is the correct torque. Let's keep let's keep seeing the correct the non -cor not correct torque, which is the magnetic torque from the from the dynamometer. So we're gonna increase the torque by 0 0.2 until we reach 1.2, um, just like we required in the manual of the lab. So here you go. This is by 0 0.2, we're gonna get 0 0.2 in the beginning. And let's take our measurements. First measurement. Okay, all the op operating meters are required. Um, then 0 
You can watch the torque from the display on the dynamometer. See here? Almost 0 0.4. I'm gonna take this measurement. 0 0.6 now. Got it. Take the measurement. 2.8. One. Then one point two. Okay. We got it. Now we're gonna switch off everything because we got all the data we need. And graph. So choose the x-axis to be IA, which is in this case I2, and the y-axis to be the torque. <coughs> so you can see here, as we said in the practical part, is 7 slash T. We got a linear relationship also between the torque and the, and the current IA, just like we said in the, uh, in the uh, practical part. One more thing, uh, in the exam, to get a, a proper results, to get re real accurate results, you can see here that EA is changing, although I didn't, I didn't touch the, the voltage control knob. In the exam, you want to keep that constant, so when it decreases, you want to increase it in order to make it again to 119.2. As it was in the beginning, whatever it was in the beginning, just fix it at that. If it was 100, keep it at 100. Like, like it's required. Because here we are required to make the speed 1500. It's a little bit not that accurate. It's not really 1500, but the most important thing is to keep it fixed. The voltage. You must keep it fixed to get accurate results. But you can also get a linear relationship even if you don't uh, fix the voltage when it decreases. How can I fix it? Uh, you 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 can fix it by reducing it or increasing increasing it as required from the voltage control knob okay. that you have. Right. We'll move on now to the shunt motor. Uh, hello everyone, and welcome again to the practical part of the shunt motor. Now we have this the circuit here as is drawn in the in the lab manual. Now we're going to connect a variable DC source. To to the field circuit in parallel with the armature circuit here. Now, this is just a voltmeter to measure the voltage, which is the voltage at the armature circuit. At the same time, it's the voltage at the field circuit. So we don't have to connect another voltmeter for the field, for the field circuit. And we have I1 measuring e, uh, measuring IA, which is the armature current, and I2 measuring IF, which is the field current. Shunt, of course, means serial, it means parallel. So now we're connecting the, as you can see here, the field circuit parallel with the armature circuit. Connected, of course, the motor is mechanically coupled. This is a belt here, and is connected to a dynamometer to measure torque and speed. Now let's see our motor. Here, uh, this is the variable source, so we're going to connect it um, through the field circuit, as we have. Let's get a longer wire. Connect it to the field circuit, which is this winding, the shunt winding. and. The shunt, the, to control the field current, we have to connect the rise start here in series with it. And because the value of the rise start is not enough to get the current we want, we're going to connect that also in series with one of the resistors in here. Okay, uh, we have it. Now we want to connect the uh, armature circuit. 
which is in parallel with the field circuit. Now, these are the these are the wires coming from the voltage source. We connect the positive here in parallel with E1 as we have in the circuit and we're going to connect that to the armature circuit through the current I1 here we're going through I1 to measure IA of the negative of it the positive of the armature and the negative of the armature to the negative of E1 because it's connected in parallel with it so now it's there okay so um, let's move on to the computer and see our data see what we change and what we get okay. uh, hello everyone I did a simple mistake with the with the field circuit I forgot to connect the, the current meter to the circuit so it's it's not that difficult we're going to disconnect from here in order to connect it in series connect this from here make it go through the currents, current meter first and then back to the circuit that's it so I have to now let's uh, move on to the computer part um, hello everyone again we're going uh, to do the computer part now everything is shut down so let's switch um, Let's switch the voltage on. Make sure the voltage knob is turned off completely. So it's on. Everything is still zero because the voltage is zero. Um, we want to keep the voltage the same as it was in, in the separately excited motor. So it was about 220 volts. I already set up the current to be uh, to be uh, 0 0.14 but um, uh, when you do this experiment uh, you're gonna have to go back and forth because when you increase the voltage I2 changes also so you're gonna have to you know keep uh, balance them up see now when I approach 220 my current has changed when you go back when you change the voltage, the current I2 changes as well. So you're going to have to keep changing the voltage and the current until you got the required values. Because the voltage is connected through the through both of the in, in, in parallel with both of the series of the shunt field series and field circuit and the armature circuit. So when I increase the voltage now my current got a little bit higher than 0 0.1440 so I'm going to set it back by changing the rise start it's almost there so it's fine and my voltage is 220 so in the lab manual we're only required for the shunt uh, it was as a as a as a extra exercise actually we were only required to uh, to uh, see the to torque versus current characteristics so we're going to do only that so let's go get the table and take the first measurement at the torque at the zero torque we only got our uh, required meters on so we don't have to remove anything so that's the torque over here see T that's our torque it's almost zero right now so let's make it 0 0.2 Increase by 0 0.2, same like we did in the separately excited, as mentioned in the report manual. So, no, just take this is because this is a different. Oh, sorry about that. Stay, come Now, the voltage will decrease a little bit. Um, keep following up the voltage, make sure that it stays at your selected value. 220. Keep when it when it drops when you increase when you increase the torque the voltage decreases a little bit 
uh, just increase it from the voltage control knob to make sure that it doesn't stay away from your required value make it 0.4 now torque I can see that as I said from the display screen on the dynamometer All right it's around 220 so it's fine 0.6 the voltage is still okay gonna make it 3.8 now we have to increase the voltage a little bit yeah we got it so you can measure it here one newton meter of torque increase the voltage a little bit Now, that's enough, these are enough values for now, so let's take the graph, on the graph select the x-axis to be the current IA, which is in meter 1 now, I1, and the y-axis to be, you can choose any of these three, make it the torque, so as you can see, we got a linear relationship. Now let's move on to the serious motor. Oh. Welcome everyone again. Now we're going to explain the practical part of Sirius DC motor. Um, but because we have a little, a, lit, uh, a, li a little time only, so we're going to explain the connection here very quickly, and then we're, I'm going to show you the connection on the device. Then I'm going to give you the results as a picture right away. We're just going to do this. The same, the same. Yeah, because it's the same steps. Because it's the same steps as in the previous part. So, uh, in the series DC motor, um, we have the winding, the field winding, which is a series winding here in blue, connected in series with the armature, and this is the main voltage source. And we only have uh, one voltmeter at the armature and one current meter measuring the IT, which is the total current of the circuit, because it's all connected in series, so we only have one current to measure. And here, the armature is coupled, like as usual, with a belt to the dynamometer to, in order to measure torque and speed. If you move on with me here to the circuit, uh, now I'm going to actually connect the, the series motor. As usual, we're going to connect it to the variable DC source through the current meter, and to the from the current meter to the uh, series winding here, the yellow one, and from the series winding to the armature in series, and back again to the negative terminal of the source. We need the voltmeter in parallel with the armature, so gonna choose E1 for that and connect it in parallel with the armature there it is now let's show you the results now we already have the, the results of the current torque and the voltage is constant as usual um, the, to the torque we changed it from 0 until 1.89 just for accuracy and we uh, got the results of speed and current now in the lab manual we are required to find the torque versus speed characteristics so we're the speed versus torque so we're going to plot it the graph so we're going to choose the x-axis to be the torque and the y-axis to be the speed so we have a nonlinear relationship, um, as I told you in the theoretical part. Hello again, and, work and welcome everyone. Uh, now we're going to explain the practical part of the compound DC motor. Um, the, DC mo the compound motor is just a motor with both series and shunt winding. Um, the connection is very simple. We're going to connect the voltage source parallel with the shunt field circuit and we're going to connect series to that 
the serious winding and in serious the armature circuit. Uh, we need to measure the armature voltage which we will, we will do with E1 and we need to measure the, uh, the uh, armature current IA which also flows in the, in the serious winding with, which we do with I1 and we need to measure IF shunt in the shunt which you will do with I2 serious with the uh, shunt circuit uh, we want to measure the, the speed versus torque characteristics so we're going to try to keep the voltage constant as we change the uh, torque at the load and see what happens to the speed and get the graph of that basically it's the same step as we showed in the in the previous step uh, previous experiment that was the serious DC motor so I'm just going to show you the connection now and we'll give you the results very quickly um, now we're going to connect actually connect the circuit of the compound motor uh, we're going to start by connecting a variable DC source through the uh, we want to connect it to we don't want to measure the total currents we're not going to go in through any current meter now we're going to go to connect the voltage in parallel with the shunt winding right away and since we want to change the value of the shunt current so we're going to connect it through a rheostat and a uh, an additional resistor just to have enough range of resistance so going to bridge the gap here to connect it in series And we also need to measure the current at the, at the shunt circuit, so we're also going to connect that in series. Yeah. Now we'd like to connect also. Now we're going to connect the series winding in series with the armature circuit. So we're going to start from the source, and like we did with the with the shunt circuit. So we're going to go through the current meter I1. Let's change. I, I actually put the f the field circuit at I1. I want it to be at I2, just to follow up with the lab manual. And I'm going to connect the C to go through the through I1 into the series winding. There's the series winding. And from that, and from that to the armature, because it's in series with the armature, and back again to the other thermal of the DC source. Right. So we also want to measure the armature voltage, so I'm going to connect E1 in parallel with the armature circuit. Now we have everything ready for to get the results. I'm going now to show you the results very quickly because we already have it ready for you.